to another GCSE Computer Science video with me, Mr. Goff, at mrgoff.com. The focus of today's video is searching algorithms. Searching algorithms check whether a value exists in a list. There are two key searching algorithms that you need to know about, the linear search and the binary search. A linear search is the simplest kind of search. It involves just going through a list one value after the next to see if the value is found or not before reaching the end of the list. This process can be made more efficient by using a flag. By a flag, I simply mean a variable that you can store some information in. In this case, we're using the variable found to store whether or not we've already found a number. This allows us to program an algorithm that will stop if we find the number. This may not seem like a big deal with the example we see here, but if there are many searches taking place with a very long list, this could save a lot of time. You can see the problem here when we look at this example of searching for the number 10. The algorithm on the left, after finding it, would continue to search through the rest of the list. If this list had been really long, that would be much longer than the seemingly longer encode algorithm on the right that would stop searching once it finds its value. The binary search is a divide and conquer algorithm and as such far more efficient. However, it does require the data to be sorted in order before it can be used. To see how the binary search works, let's work through an example of doing a binary search for Matt in the array below. The first step in a binary search is to identify the middle item in the array, in this case, Kai. It should be noted if there were two items in the middle of the array that we would normally implement this using floor division. For that reason, the one on the left would always be chosen. If the middle item is the search term, our algorithm can stop an output found. Otherwise, that middle item and everything on the side that our search term would not be on gets removed. In this case, as Matt would come after Kai, Kai and everything before, Aaron, Bob and Devleep, would all be removed. We then repeat that process with our new shortened list until eventually we have a list of just one item. In this case, we have a shortened list of Matt, Stefan and Willie. We would now look at Stefan. That is not correct. Matt would come before it. So Stefan and Willie would be removed. Now we have a list of just one name, Matt, and we could say that it was found and stop our algorithm. You could in an exam be asked to compare these two types of search. The linear search has one primary advantage. It works on unsorted data. Other than that, it is far less efficient than the binary search. That is because with the linear search, the worst possible case is that you find the item in the last position or find that the item is not in the list. This has a complexity of ON, meaning that the length of the list determines how many possible searches might be carried out. The binary search, on the other hand, halves the list each time. This means it has a time complexity of log N. What we mean by this is that if we look at our example, which had seven items in the list, 2 to the 2 is 4 items. That's not enough for our list. 2 to the 3 is 8 items. That means any list with 8 or less items is going to have a maximum number of searches of 3 times before the item is found or it can be declared as not in the list. With 4 searches, we could cover up to 16 numbers. With 5, up to 32. With 6, up to 64. And this pattern continues showing that the power of the binary search increases the larger the list. And that brings us to the end of another video. Join us again for another video. Next time we will be talking about sorting algorithms. Until then, I've been Mr. Goff from mrgoff.com and it's bye for now.